<laughs> okay. Huwag <laughs> na magamit ng ganyan. Okay, uh, good afternoon sa bawat isa sa inyo. Before we uh, pray na natin tayo, no? Ang presentation na ito, discuss natin ang inspiration and authority of the Bible writers and Ellen White. Ano ba ang pagkakaiba at ano naman ang pagkakapareho ng paniniwalang natin sa Biblia at sa writings ni Ellen White. Mark po nga yung Bible po. At uh, sasagutin natin ang question, how can Adventists believe in Sola Scriptura and yet also hold the Ellen White writings as authoritative? Paano ang maniniwala po ang Seventh-day Adventist na Sola Scriptura at the same time, grapid din yung ating foundation sa writings ni Ellen White. Paano, ta paano mara-reconcile yung kaisipang gano'n? And we will also uh, discuss some very simple uh, hermeneutics principles. Ano yung sinin ang hermeneutics? Hermeneutics meaning how to interpret the Bible and how to interpret the spirit of God. So, uh, okay, so let's see. Let's begin. Ano ibig sabihin ng mechanical inspiration? Ang mechanical inspiration, in-inspire ba ng Diyos ang um, mga propeta na isulat exactly kung ano talaga ang gusto niya? Isulat na every word, every letter, every dot, every kama ay pinapasulat ng Panginoon. Ganito ba yun? Ang pangalawa, Anong klaseng inspiration ang tinanggap ni Ellen White at ng mga writers sa Bible? Let us see. Noong 1911, sinulat, okay, noong 1911, ni-revise ang Great Controversy. Ang tanong, kung ni-revise ang Great Controversy at maraming idinagdag, nagkamali ba ang Diyos sa pagdikta kay Ellen White? Bakit ni-revise? Marami sa mga grupo ngayon ayaw basahin yung revise standard or revise na version ng Great Controversy. Okay? Kasi na iba na daw yun. O baka pinakailaman na. Pero si Ellen White din mismo ang personal na na nag-check ng Great Controversy bago ito i-publish. So, meron bang pagkakamali sa nakuna? Si Mrs. White ba ay masyadong inasyon na pwede niyang pakialaman yung kanila niyang version. Wala ba siyang karapatan na baguhin yung una niyang Great Controversy? Tingnan natin kung gaano ka, uh, gaano ba talaga yung inspiration na nag-work. Kilala niyo si, uh, si Butler. Si Butler was a president of the JAR Conference. Uh, and during that time, in 1884, sumulat siya ng mga ganitong salita na ang Ruth, ang Proverbs, at ang Songs of Solomon daw, at ang Job, ay less inspired. Yan ang sabi niya. Pero yung mga discourses ni Jesus Christ at yung books of Moses are fully inspired. Yan ang kanyang kaisipan. At sinabi niya yung mga historical books. Ano ba yung mga historical books? Of first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Esther, Nehemiah, Esther. The Esthers are all historical books. Hindi na ako kailangan ng inspiration niyo kasi historical naman daw yun. At ang Luke chapter 1, 1 to 3 ay wala talagang to totally inspiration. Kasi yun daw ay reiteration lang or kopya lang o kinopya lang. Well, kung ito ang paniniwalaan natin, pwede natin i-justify ang mga bagay-bagay sa Biblia. Sabi natin, ah kasi ito inspired, ito less inspired, ito hindi inspired. Ang tanong, ano ba talaga ang inspired sa Bible? O paano ba talaga ito ay sinula? Ang sabi sa Biblia, For the prophecy never came by the will of man. So lahat ng mga naisulat sa buong Biblia, did not come by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Tandaan yung salitang move. Yung move, ito din yung pinanggalingan ng motivation or that which makes you do something or move. So they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Ang sabi, how many scriptures are inspired? Ang sabi, all scripture 
is given by inspiration of God. So, lahat. How many books are inspired? Lahat. The 66 books of the Bible. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. So, yung tip o yung pinaka-purpose ng Bible is what? For reproof, for rebuke, for correction, and for instruction. Lahat yun inspired, magagamit lahat yun. Kaya lang sa iba't ibang paraan. May historical kasi may mga mahilig sa history. Merong poetic kasi mahilig sa poetry. May mga tao na masyadong depressed. So, kailangan nila ng mga songs ni David. May mga tao masyadong masaya. Kailangan nila ng songs of Solomon and whatever. Lahat, nag Nagre-relate ito sa iba't ibang experiences ng mga, prophets, ng mga prophets. And it also relates to the different experiences of the readers. Okay? Pero lahat sila are inspired. And they are united with each other. And all of them are inspired by the Holy Spirit. So there, there are two steps. First, the Holy Spirit communicated messages from God to human beings. And second, that these human beings wrote the messages down. So sino ang in-inspire ng Diyos? Yung sulat o yung tagasulat? Ulitin ko, sino ang in-inspire ng Diyos? Yung tagasulat o yung sinulat? Yung tagasulat ang in-inspire ng Diyos. Kaya binigyan ng Diyos ng enough allowance ang tagasulat para isulat ito in the way He expressed things according to His own thoughts, according to His own way. His language, His culture, even His emotions are there in the writing. Pero yung thoughts is by the inspiration of God to the uh, prophet. So all scriptures were given inspiration. Kasi may mga tao na pinipick up lang ito na ito ay inspired at ito ay hindi. At kung ayaw nilang isang scripture, hindi nila gagamitin. Meron isang religion na sinabi nila, hindi na kailangan ng Old Testament, New Testament na lang. Uh, so, all scriptures are inspired. So, it is very dangerous na gumawa tayo ng posisyon na ito lang ang dapat basahin at ito hindi. Ito ang dapat sundin, ito hindi. Ganun din ang ginagawa nila ngayon sa mga writings ng Israel. Pagdating sa diet, ayaw nila. Pagdating sa inspiration of Sir Pages, ito nila. But we cannot do this. All have been inspired because once a prophet is a prophet, the Lord communicates to the prophets by his thoughts or by her thoughts. Now let's continue. Masabi sa Luke chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to us by those who from first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent theology. So, itong ginawa ni Luke, nabasa niya yung mga account tungkol kay Jesus Christ. Para mas organize, gumawa siya ng mas organized na compilation ng gospel. Get the point? So, kumuha siya mula sa isang author, isang mga author, tapos kinumpaya niya para mas, mas malawa. Ano? Inspired ba yun o collection lang? Just the same. In-inspire siya ng Panginoon na, in-minute siya ng Panginoon na, i-compile ito para mas maging maliwanag ang account ko kay Jesus Christ. In Great Controversy, page 5, it says, The Bible points to God as its author. Sino ang author ng Bible? God. So pag sinabi ng mga tao sa inyo, alam mo, yung Bible, gawa lang yan ang tao. Well, kung gawa yan ang tao, sino nagpagawa sa tao? Ang Diyos. Isa pa. So kung, kung hindi ang tao gumawa ng Bible, sino yung expect natin gagawa ng Bible? Hindi naman siguro pwede ang baboy o kaya ang kungboy o whatever. Hindi naman ay Kasi nag express ang Diyos sa tao, therefore, gagamit siya ng tao para maintindihan din ang kapwa tao. So, hindi pwedeng gawin ito ni human. Pero there were times na sumulat ang Diyos sa pamagitan mismo ng kanyang kamay. Ano ito? The Ten Commandments and the writings on the wall. Many, many taken the person. And these are personal, especially judgment of God written on the wall para mas vividly na makita natin ang conviction ng sin.
Okay, let's continue. She said, Yet it was written by human hands. Kaninong hands? Human. human. Parang secretary. Pagka magpasulat ako sa secretary ko, ang pangalan, pag isusulat ng secretary yung pangalan niya, of course yung pangalan ko. Pero sino sumulat? Siya. Sino nagpasulat? Ako. That's it. So, and in the varied style of its different books, it presents the characteristics of the several writers. The truths revealed are all given by inspiration of God. So, lahat ng mga truths na nireveal are all given by inspiration of God. Ang Diyos pa rin ang nag-move. Bakit ito nila na isula? The truths revealed are all given by inspiration of God, yet they are expressed in the words of men. So, isahin natin. Ah, see the Bible. Take for example the Bible. How many languages the Bible was written? Almost three languages. Hebrew, Aramaic, and Koine Greek. So why are there three uh, three languages? Because these are the languages of the authors of the Bible. How many authors are there in the Bible? There are about 40 authors, 66 books. So in express it all in, a, in, in their own way of language, and not only language, they embedded their own culture. Their own culture was embedded. So they kalakip nito ang kanilang kultura na naisulat sa buong scripture. Kaya kung nagbasa kayo ng Bible, huwag nyo lang just basahin. Alamin nyo rin po ng kultura nila kasi baka hindi nyo maintindihan kung ano sinasabi nila kasi meron sila rin yung kultura. Kahit na ang mga writings sa mga Pilipinos, pag binasa ng mga Amerikan, hindi rin na makukuha kasi meron siyang kalakip na kultura. Kasi for example, nag-joke kayo. Minsan mo walang tatawa doon sa joke mo. Bakit? Kasi hindi naman na, hindi nila nakukuha yung kultura na meron. You get the point? Kaya minsan, para mga Pilipino, nag-joke, tapos mga, tapos English natin sinabi, hindi niya effective, di ba? Pero pag Pilipino, Tagalog natin sino, effective pa siya. Kasi, you know, cultures and languages are associated with each other. All languages has culture, and all culture expresses their culture in a language. Now, she said, in great controversy still, as presented, as presented through different individuals, through different individuals, the truth is brought out in its varied aspects. Iba-iba yung pagkakabot out. Yung thoughts na binigay ng Panginoon, pagka lumabas na yan sa, sa salita, sa language ng isang writer, may, may ano na yan, may, may variations, may pagkakaiba. Ano mayayari? One writer is more strongly impressed with one phase of the subject. Say for example, the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Pareho lang silang Gospels, pero bakit iba-iba yung pagkaka-tema? Si Luke, ang tema niya is about healing. Si Matthew is about the kingdom. Si John was about the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, okay? Si Matthew, Mark, Luke, si Mark naman was about the, the, the discipleship and the, the, the prayer habits of Jesus Christ. So why are they married? Because they have different perspectives. They have different emotions. They have different uh, natin, patterns of thoughts. Kung ano yung mas impressive sa kanila, yun ang mas isusulat nila. Okay? Kung ano yung nag-impress sa kanila. Then one writer is more strongly impressed with one face of the subject. Masyado siya nagpo-concentrate sa isang face ng subject. He grasps those points that harmonize with his experience or with his power of perception and appreciation. And another seizes upon different faiths. Ikaw, pagka, pagka mayroong nag-preach dito, tapos pinag-reflect mo, tinan mo yung isa nagko-concentrate dun sa, sa introduction kasi gustong gusto niya yung part na ganito. Yung isa naman, nag, 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 ano siya, nag, nag-re-reflect siya tungkol dun sa yung, yung paghihirap kasi yun, yun yung nakaka-relate siya. Kung sa kwento, mayroong paghihirap, yung tao naghihirap, laging ang kanyang concentration ay yung yung paghihirap din ng tao kasi nakaka-relate siya. Kapag kayo saya naman, yung saya din naman. According to the experiences of men. And just the same sa mga authors. Now, and each under the guidance of the Holy Spirit present what is most forcibly impressed upon his own mind, a different aspect of the truth in each, but a perfect harmony through all. Mapapansin nyo kahit iba-iba sila. Yung harmony, pareho sila ng tema. I mean, 
At pareho sila ng tinutumbok, pareho sila ng objectives, at pareho sila ng inaangat. After all, the whole gospel is talk, talking about Jesus Christ. Amen? Jesus Christ, the Savior. Si Matthew, pinasimula niya sa lineage because he was talking about the kingdom that is going to be established. And from lineage, 14 generation from Adam, 14 generation from Abraham, 14 generation from David, and 14 generation from David to, to Jesus Christ. And he was talking about establishment of the, earth, the, the kingdom that is going to come. Yun yung kanyang gusto. So, he has to establish the lineage in order to establish that Jesus Christ is both king. While, the, on the other hand, Luke was establishing that Jesus Christ is a healer. And yet, just the same, it's Jesus Christ who is being exalted in different themes. In different themes. Now, what are the favorite themes of Ellen White? Kanina, the love of God, the great controversy, the crucifixion of Jesus. These are the favorite themes of, of Ellen White. So this is how the, the Bible and the Spirit of Prophecy are inspired. First, from God, He inspires the writers, the Bible writers. And then from the Bible writers, the product is the Bible. While from God, He inspires Ellen White. And Ellen White writes her own writings. And what was the gap? 3,000 years of gap. So how could you imagine, how could you imagine a God that uh, that you know that implores or at least uh, moves the person to write with the with the same intention of saving the whole world. Siempre magbabago kasi iba na yung experience niya Ellen White. Iba na yung kanya mga iba na yung culture na meron siya. At iba na rin yung context na meron siya. Do you get the point? Context means background. The people, the history of the people. The situations of the people, the time, even the feelings are involved in this context. But even though it is 3,000 3, years ago, even though it is 3,000 years ago, it expresses unity so that men would be saved. Number one, men would be saved and that we would glorify God. Are there errors in the Bible? Are there errors in the Bible? Uh, Kaya ako nag, nag-lecture nito, marami nag-re-react. And hopefully, dahil young people kayo are open enough, but please, patapusin nyo muna ako bago kayo mag-react. Okay? Have you ever wondered, are there errors in the Bible? Or did Ellen White write things not true? Meron ba siyang may sulat na hindi totoo? Well, lagi, siyempre, usually, tanggap lang tayo ng tanggap pagka sinabi sa atin. But let us ask our quest- the question ourselves. Meron ba talagang pagkakamali na meron sa Bible at sa Spirit of Prophecy? Tanong ko sa inyo, yung ba mga ginamit ng Diyos ay hindi nagkakamali o nagkakamali? Are they fallible or non-fallible? We should ask the question first. Ang mga ginamit ba ng Diyos ay, nagkaka- ay marunong magkamali? Nagkakamali o hindi? Nagkakamali. Now, kung sila ang sumulat ng Bible, is it possible na magkamali sila? Ngayon, sino ba ang sumulat ng Bible? Ao o Diyos? Kung tao ang ginamit ng Diyos, was there any possibility na magkamali ang tao? Ayaw, na, ayaw natin i-give up talaga yung idea. No? Well, let us see. In uh, Selected Messages Volume 1, it says, Man is fallible, but God's Word is infallible. Man is fallible, but God's Word is infallible. Ang tao daw ay nagkakamali. Pero ang salita ng Diyos ay hindi nagkakamali. In what sense? Okay? Let's see. Apparently, even though writers have one personality and style, God's protection made sure Bible remain untainted. Bagaman may mga, you know, may mga sabi na natin fault or infallibility sa tao, 
pin, uh, ginawa ng Diyos na sure ang kanyang protection para manatiling ang untainted o walang gungis ang kanyang salita. Amen? Paano niya ito ginawa? In many ways. This of course doesn't mean prophets are sinless. Hindi ibig sabihin ito na ang mga prophets ay sinless. Pero pinrotektahan ng Diyos ang kanyang mga salita para hindi ito magkamali. It's God's protection, not prophets' merits kept the Bible pure. Tandaan niya, hindi dahil sa galing o sa pagiging impat uh, na, na ang, ang, ang writers ay infallible na hindi nagkamali ang Bible, kundi ang pagprotekta ng Diyos ang nag, nagpa, ano, nagpa-untainted sa the whole Bible. So in regard to infallibility, I never claimed it. God alone is infallible. So ever, even Ellen White claimed that she is fallible na siya ay nagkakamali. At, hindi, at ang sabi niya na ang Diyos lamang ang, ang hindi nagkakamali. Now, tingnan natin sa Bible, si Moses, si Paul, nagkamali ba sila? Hindi. Or take, let's take for example, Moses. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, ano, magsalita ka sa bato. Ano ginawa niya? Inampas niya yung bato ng makagawang beses. Nagkamali din. Eh, nagkamali pala si Moses eh. Bakit pinabasa natin yung mga writings ni Moses? Kasi si Moses nagkakamali. Pero yung paggabay ng Diyos sa pagsula ng Biblia ay, ay hindi kailanman magkakamali sapagkat ang Diyos ang nag-protect nito. What about and what about Paul? Moses si Paul. He was not authorized of God to proceed as much as they asked. And when the copies of it, the Bible, were few, learned men had in some instances changed the words thinking that they were making it more plain ano nangyari nung tinatranslate ng bible how many times did they translate first the Septuagint they translated the Old Testament into Greek the Septuagint so tinranslate ito from Hebrew to Greek sa tingin nyo sa translation na ito ay walang posibleng pagkakamali Okay? Maybe. Ba't sa tingin nyo, magbabago ba yung intention ng, ng scripture na para iligtas ang mga tao? Or just the same. Okay? Siguro may mga minor lang. But when, in reality, they were mystifying that which was plain by causing it to lead to their established views where they were governed by tradition. Ito na yan. And sometimes, pag dumaan na sa taong ito, lalo na sa kapwa-tao, ang mangyayari, imbis na pinapalinaw nila, gagamitin nila yung kanilang kultura, gagamitin nila yung kanilang sariling kaisipan, gagamitin nila yung kanilang sariling practices. At pag dumaan na ito sa kanilang translation, nababawasan na nito yung real meaning. At kumbag sa, sa, ano, sa piniga, ay hindi na natin nakuha yung buong sustansya. Did that the point? So, kahit tayo ngayon, nagbabasa tayo ng Bible, hindi pa rin natin ma- manamnam talaga yung kailaliman ito. Kasi, dumaan na ito sa translation. Meaning, kung babalik lang tayo sa, sa original, mas magiging malinaw sa atin ang lahat na ito. Ang kaso mo, hindi naman tayo makabalik sa original kasi hindi naman tayo Greek. Okay? Diba? So, anong gagawin natin? We trust that even during the process of translation, God is at work so that what is essential will be translated. Yung essential, kailangan-kailangan natin for salvation. Diba? So, kagaya rin ng mundo, ang um, earth ay nagre-reveal ng karakter ng Diyos. Pero, it was well na obliterated. Halos, halos na wala na yung karakter ng Diyos. Pero kahit sa ganitong itsura, kaya pa rin tayong iligtas ng ganitong classic nature. Amen? 
So, ganun din sa scripture. Kahit na mayroong mga minor, sabihin na natin, some changes that happen, it is still able to save us to the uttermost. Amen? Yung pinaka-intensyon na iligtas tayo ay kaya pa rin gawin ng buong scripture. He made this. Let us take, for example, this, uh, this example. In 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 20, He made the sea of cast metal, circular in shape, measuring 10 cubits from the wind to reef, and 5 cubits high. He took a line of 30 cubits to measure around it. So, pag titignan natin yung, yung kanilang, from rim to rim, it's 5 cubits high. Pag titignan natin yung all around, sabi niya, there were 30 cubits. Well, mathematically, kung ito kaya ay, ito kaya ay, uh, Exact. Check natin. Ang solution para malaman mo kung gaano ka kalaki yung surface is P or pi. Okay, so the diameter times pi equals the surface area. Tawa pa rin. So let us see if this is mathematically correct. 10 cubits times 3.14 is 31 plus cubits. Kaya sabi ng Bible, 30 cubits measures around it. So does it mean that the Bible, was, the Bible was inconsistent? Because it does not agree to the mathematical calculation? But even in rounding system, we round 31 to 30. At napaka-minor niyan para hindi ka maligtas. Yun lang mga tao na gustong maghanap ng mali sa Bible. You know, those persons who has no faith, wala silang gagawin kundi yung manap ng mga mali sa Bible. At pag nakahanap sila, gagawin nila ang dahilan nito para tanggihan ng Diyos. Pero whether there are consistencies like this, very minor consistencies, it does not make the person unsafe. Bakit? Because there, hindi, mo, hindi mo kailangan mag-doubt sa napakaliit na Hindi mo kailangan mag-doubt sa napakaliit na bagay. And, and in fact, even if you round this, it's still 30. Amen? Even if you round this. So, ang, ang point ko dito, these are minor things na hindi na natin. Sa, sa bahay, ang importante nagmamahal. Kung may mga ilang maliliit na mga pagkakamali, it does not destroy our trust to our parents. Ang mamali. It does not destroy our trust to parents. Now, let us see. And sabi, are there errors in the Bible? Some look to us gravely and say, Don't you think there might have been some mistake in the copyist or in the translators? This is all probable. And the mind that is so narrow that it will hesitate and stumble over this possibility or that possibility would be just as ready to stumble over the mysteries of the inspired words because their feeble minds cannot see through the purposes of God. And tao daw, na nagahanap ng mistake dito sa copies o sa interpreter. Kapag kaganoon daw ang isip niya at nagahanap siya ng ganito mga at nag-hesitate siya sa mga possibility, ay ano, ay, ay lalo siyang babagsak sa mas, mala, mas malaki pang mystery sa buong Bibliya. Say, for example, kung hindi mo maintindihan ng revelation, do you conclude that this is not the word of God? Kung hindi mo maintindihan yung Isaiah, hindi mo maintindihan ng Ang Daniel, do you conclude na hindi talaga ito salita ng Diyos? Just because it is shrouded with mystery? Eh yung ang maliliit na bagay eh, kinokontra mo na yung pang buong, halos buong uh, prophecies. So Ellen White was saying that if you don't have faith, you would not understand the whole scripture. But by faith, that seeks understanding. Lalong lalakas ang pananampalataya mo. Why? Because you would prove that the Bible is really the word of God. Now, let's see. Yes, they would just as easily stumble over plain facts that our common mind will help, will accept, and discern the divine, and to which God's utterance is plain and beautiful, full of marrow and fatness. All the mistakes will not cause trouble to one's soul or cause any feet to stumble that would not manufacture difficulties from the plainest revealed truth. Anong ibig niya sabihin dito? Ang sabihin niya dito, Kung tayo'y babagsak sa maliliit na mga bagay na hindi natin matanggap, 
At hindi natin maintindihan yung yung panukala ng divine or God's utterance is plain kahit na plain ng pagkakasabi ng Panginoon at nagpapatabahan ang ating buong kaluluwa ang lahat ng mga maliliit na mga mistake na to ay hindi kayang papagsakit tayo kung tayo, tayo, tayo may panakampalataya okay? maliliit na mga minor issues in fact, pag kinumpute-compute nila Ang, ang mistakes ng Bible it would only total to 0.01 almost 0.016 percent intindihan nyo? 0.016 percent doesn't make sense it's not even a mistake bakit? meron ba kayong nakita na author na hindi nagkamali? in fact, hindi lang basta nagkamali isang author, basahin mo yung kanyang dalawang sinulat hindi pa nagkaisa pero ang Bible na may 40 authors halos nagkakaisa pa sila. Very minor lang ang differences. Very minor. Point, almost point zero sixteen. Pero isang author ngayon, pag sumulat sa, sumulat sa uli isang makikita mo, almost 10% eh, ang pagkakamali, magkakaiba-iba ang kanyang sinabi. Kahit mag-asawa pa sila ng pumuntrahan. You get the point? So, these are consistencies in the Bible. Now, could there be any reason to doubt? And what is the reason to doubt? Will. If you will to doubt, then you will doubt. If it is not your will to doubt, then you will not doubt. Let's see. The mysteries of the Bible so far from being an argument against it. Yung mga mystery, yung mga hindi natin maintindihan. Minsan ginagawa natin argument against the Bible. That the Bible is not written by God because it is mysterious. But mind this. According to Steps to Christ, Ellen White said, The mystery of the Bible, so far from being an argument against it, are among the strongest evidences of its divine inspiration. Kung iniisip mo na yung mga misteryo sa Biblia ang dahilan kung bakit hindi siya salita ng Diyos, sasabihin ko sa iyo, ito ang pinakamagtibay na dahilan kung bakit siya salita ng Diyos. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo siya maintindihan. Kasi kung naintindihan mo agad ang Bible, hindi siya salita ng Diyos, siya ay comics, newspaper, Kaya ng mga mababasa natin sa internet, napakatali mga hindi siya. So, it is the strongest argument for the Bible, not against the Bible. If it contained no account of God, but that which we would comprehend, if it is His greatness and majesty could be grasped by finite minds, then the Bible would not, as now, bear the unmistakable evidence of divinity. So, malalaman natin ang Bible talaga, ay ano, salita ng Diyos, kasi... Napakalalim nito para sa atin kasi pinag-usapan dito yung divine character. Okay? So tama ang sabi sa Isaiah, uh, your thoughts are not my thoughts, your ways are not my ways. So the, as the heaven is far from the earth, so are your thoughts from, far from my thoughts and your plans far from my plans. So kung bakit hindi natin ito maintindihan kasi talagang Diyos ang sumulat nito. At para maintindihan natin siya, we needed the, the, what? the power of the Holy Spirit in order for us to fully comprehend the mysteries of the Bible, okay? And with all diligence that we should read our Bible, not as we read an ordinary paper that human beings has been offered. We should be reading the Bible as if God himself was the author, and unless we ask the author's power or the ability to understand, we would not understand the scripture. This, Kaya nga, iba yung turing natin sa Biblia kapag ka nagbabasa tayo, hindi siya kagaya ng ordinary na pagbabasa natin sa internet o kaya sa mga tabloids or whatever. The greatness of its themes should inspire faith in it as the Word of God. Yung mga temang meron dito, pag binasa nyo ang, pag binasa nyo ang uh, Quran, have you read Quran? Pag binasa nyo siya, mag-iba kung gali nyo. Because the whole Quran does not discuss grace. There was no grace. They were talking about peace, but there was no grace. There was no grace. Hindi grasa pinag-usapan. That even the, he, even the Hindus does not have grace. Kung ano nagawa mo, marurusahan ka dun. May re-reincarnate ka, maganda ba? There was no grace. Walang, wala talagang namatay. We were, what you deserve, you will go where you deserve. Ganon din sa, ganon din sa Buddhist. Kung anong ginawa mo, yun ang mangyayari sa'yo. But in the scripture, in the Bible, 
kahit na hindi ka deserving maligtas, basta tinanggap mo si Kristo, you will be saved. And what kind of thing is this? This is grace that no one could discern because this is God's divine character. Amen? At napakaganda ng tema ng scriptures. Napakaganda ng tema ng scriptures. What else? In almost every case where a person becomes unsettled in regard to the inspiration of the Word of God, it is on the account of their unsanctified lives which that word condemns. Alam nyo, pag nagbasa ka ng Biblia, pag unsanctified ka yung life mo, magkukonclude ka na ito hindi sa Diyos. Ito, ito gusto ko, ito ko ayaw ko. Ikaw compartmentalize mo ng Bible. Bakit? Kasi hindi, hindi ka napapanal at hindi ka comfortable sa salita. And you don't have much faith. Kaya nga pag nagbabasa kayo ng Biblia, siguraduhin ninyo na nagpapasakot kayo sa Panginoon at nagsisisi kayo na nagpapasakot kayo sa Banala Espiritu. Why? Because it would end habang nagbabasa kayo dito na hindi kayo maniniwala. Bakit? Kasi unsanctified ang puso natin. They will not receive its reproofs. Ayaw mong pakinggan ang kanyang mga pagsansala and threatenings because this reflect upon their wrong course of action. Kaya nga pag may nagpa-Bible study kayo, nagbo-voice of youth kayo, yung mga taong matigas at ah, gusto nila yung kasalanan nila, hindi nyo ma, hindi nyo ma-review using the Bible because they have their own thoughts. Only those who are meek, only those who mourn for their sins, and only those who thirst for righteousness will receive the blessings of God. Okay? And only those who have faith. And what is faith? Faith is being open to God It's being open to God, opening your minds to God and believing that God will make you understand. That is faith. Nakita nyo? Ano yung sabihin ng faith? Ang faith ay pagiging bukas ang isip na naniniwala ka na kahit hindi mo naiintindihan, maiintindihan mo din sa pamamagitan ng Diyos. That is faith. Now let us summarize a little bit as we uh, summarize a little bit. Only thoughts are communicated. Ano ang kinukommunicate ng Diyos? Thoughts. Isa. Okay, thoughts ang kinukommunicate. Second, the Bible is written in human words. Kaya pag nagbasa ka, kung ano talaga yung words niya, isa yun talaga yun. Okay? The Bible is inspired in its entirety. Buo ang inspiration ng Biblia. Buong buo. Hindi kulang. Buo. At ang buong Biblia ay inspired. It may be that there are few minor factual errors which will lead nobody astray. Naniniwala tayo, okay, na merong mga maliligit lamang na mga pagkakamali, pero hindi nito kaya iligaw ang sinuman. Okay? Hindi nito kaya iligaw ang sinuman. Third, uh, verse 5. All this applies to the Bible and Ellen White. Kung ano yung pagkakagawa ng Biblia, siyang siya din ang pagkakagawa ng Ellen White's writing. So lahat ng mga prinsipyo na natutunan nyo ngayon, i-apply nyo lang yan lahat kay Ellen White. Or just the same. Pero ang tanong, pareho ba ang purpose ng writings ni Mrs. White at ng Bible? Okay? Pareho ba ang objectives? Okay? I would rather disagree. Alam nyo na yung, yung kanina, yung pinag-uusapan natin. Sabi nung kapitan, kap, huwag na po kayo pumunta kasi may manual na kami. Kaya na po namin na uh, i-manage yung barko. Ama, mali. Kung may manual na, huwag na yung kapitan. So, pagka may bago na po kami, hindi namin kailangan na po kayo pa. Na mag-i-explain ko sa amin. So, let us see. Pareho ba ang role ng GPS at saka ng manual at saka yung role ng kapitan? Pareho ba ang role yun? Ano? Lalabag ba ang kapitan sa GPS o kaya sa mano? Lalabag ba siya? Hindi, di ba? Okay. Nailangan pa rin ba ng kapitan? Nailangan pa rin. So I think this is, these are roles that we need to understand. These are few roles that we need to understand. Hindi po kung may navigator ka o may GPS ka, hindi mo na kailangan ng kapitan. Eh, paano ito ang gawala ka, hindi mo maintindihan yung GPS? Ano ang mayayari? Wala ka na, maligaw ka na. Okay, let us see. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war 
be the rest of our offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. So, na daw, nagali daw ang perbo sa sa na, nalabi ng babae na tumutupad sa utos ng Diyos at may at, at may patutuon ni Jesus. At ano itong patutuon ni Jesus? Sabi sa verse 90 verse 10, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Ano daw yung patutuo ni Jesus na meron na ang nalabi ang espiritu ng ulap. Now, what what do we know about Sola Scriptura? Let us see from Wikipedia. Check natin. Sola Scriptura is a doctrine that the Bible contains all knowledge necessary for salvation and holiness. Consequently, Sola Scriptura demands only those doctrines are to be admitted or confessed that are found directly within or indirectly by using valid logical deduction or valid deductive reasoning from Scripture. Alam niyo sabi ni Martin Luther, unless I am convinced from the scripture or from plain reason, okay, I would not recant. Okay, it is very dangerous for me to go against my conscience. So I, I here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. So help me God. You get the point? So. Ang stand ni Martin Luther was if it could be explained from the scripture and from plainest reason, hindi siya pwedeng mamove. Okay? So, for them, this is the, this is their explanation. What from the scripture and from valid logical deduction or valid deductive reasoning from scripture. Deductive reasoning from scripture. However, sola scriptura is not a denial of other authorities governing Christian life and devotion. Hindi porke na naniniwala tayo sa Bible and Bible alone na hindi na natin pwede pakinabangan ang extra-biblical o yung ibang bagay na sinulat ng ibang tao. Tama mo rin? Naniniwala ba kayo sa mga sinulat ni ni Yosefsa? Hanggat ito'y valid, hanggat ito ay moral, hanggat ito'y hindi lumalabag sa writings ni ethne, uh, na, 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 ng scripture, pwede natin itong gamitin. Naniniwala ba kayo sa science? Definitely. So, hindi po kay sola scriptura, hindi na natin paninulaan lahat ng libro. Tama mali. Hindi ganun. Ibig sabihin, we believe that the scripture is, is the measurement of all. Siya yung panukap sa lahat ng tama at mali. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na lahat na lang ng ibang libro ay babagsak sa palupa. You get the point? Hindi lahat ng libro ay babagsak. May mga libro na ano, na kasangayon pa rin sa panukat. Ang panukat nga pala in the in the uh, in the Latin word is canon. Canon. So canon means ruler. Ruler means to measure. So what the Bible is used to measure beliefs and practices. To measure beliefs and practices. Ellen White says, the Bible, uh, special testimonies, the Bible and the Bible alone is the rule of faith. The Bible and the Bible alone is the rule of faith. She, she wrote also in uh, Christian Welfare, we then took the position that the Bible and the Bible only was to be our guide. And we are never to depart from this position. So what is our, our position? The Bible and the Bible alone is our guide. So pag tinanong kayo, naniniwala ba kayo sa Bible and Bible alone? Yes. Even Ellen White believes that it's the Bible alone. Okay? What else? You are not familiar with the scriptures. Eh, bakit tayo nagbabasa ng Ellen White writings? Pakinggan niya ang explanation ni Ellen White. You are not familiar with the scriptures. Hindi niyo masyadong kami sa ang scripture. Lalo na sa ating ngayon. Na puro nonsense na lang ang mga napapanood. Wala na oras para sa scriptures. Hindi na natin talaga na-deduct masyadong yung scriptures. Sabi niya, 
you are not familiar with the scriptures. If you had made God's word your study with a desire to reach the Bible standard and attain to Christian perfection, kung sana hinangat ninyo na maabot yung Christian perfection, ang sabi niya, and attain to Christian perfection, you would not have needed the testimony. Hindi niyo sana kailangan pa ang mga writings na Eleanor. Kung nagbabasa lang kayo talaga ng Biblia, hindi niyo nakakailanganin ang writings niya. But it is because you have neglected to acquaint yourself with God's inspired book. Dahil sa ating negligence, nabasahin ang God's inspired book na tayo ay nasusway kung saan saan, kung sino sino. Anong ginawa ng Panginoon? That He has sought to reach you by simple, direct testimonies. May mababasa ba kayong masturbation sa Bible? Sabi, Pastor, wala namang masturbation sa Bible. Eh. Kaya pwede lang. O basahin mo mga writings si Mises. So, itingnan natin kung hindi ka mas right ng delta. Wala namang sinabi hindi magkape, Pastor. Ha? Sa Bible, ha? saan ka nakabasa? Kasi hindi ka na, hindi mo ninamnam ng kahili yung ibig sabihin. Pero pag binasa mo mga writings si Mises, diretsoan siya. And there are still many councils na wala yung language ng Bible, pero may language na tayong panibago ngayon. You get the point? Wala naman yung ganito pasura. Wala naman bawal magano ha. Bawal mag ganito, bawal mag ganito. Yes, wala. Pero check mo, yung pinaka-principles na doon. Pero ayaw kasi natin tutukan. Kaya ginamit ang writing si Miss Wild para diretohin yung hindi natin naitindihan. Amen? Diretohin sa lingwahe natin, baka ako pa ikot-ikot pa tayo. So, these are, are good things, beneficiary for us to understand. The Lord designs to warn you, to reprove you, to counsel through testimonies given, and to impress your minds with the importance of the truth of His Word. So, ano role niya? Iba palit tayo lagi sa Bible. And in case hindi natin maunawaan, iba pakita niya in the plainest testimony, in the plainest words, Kung ano ang sinasabi ng Biblia. The written testimonies are not to give new life. Ang mga writings, Mrs. White, hindi dapat nagbibigay ng panibagong liwanag. Kundi ano? But to impress vividly upon the heart the truths of inspiration already revealed. Bubuklatin niya lang ulit ang sinasabi ng Biblia. I-impress niya lang ng maigi sa'yo. Ipupukpuk niya lang ng maigi sa'yo ng mas, ma ng, ng mas maliwanag pa sa iyo ang sinasabi ng scripture. So what does he recommend before, in the last, at uh, the last time, sabi niya, I recommend to you, dear reader, the word of God as the rule of your faith and practice. By that word, we are to be judged. Dito tayo husgahan. Amen? God has, in that word, promised to give divisions in the last days. Not for the new rule of faith, but for the comfort of his people. So, bakit binigay mga visions, Ellen White? Not as a rule of faith, hindi para gumawa ng panibagong requirement. Kundi para i-encourage, i-comfort tayo. Naalala niyo yung mga visions si Ellen White. And I hope you would, uh, buklatin nyo, nyo uli, you know, you can, you can go to the internet. At tingnan niyo what are the visions of Ellen White. Because all of these visions are to encourage us and to comfort us. Lalo na, uh, very shaky na ang ating pananampalataya. So, but for the comfort of His people and to correct those who err against the Bible truth. So, mahalaga pala ang role na ginampanan ni Mrs. White para itama ka ng maigi. Hindi bagong life, kundi gagamitin niya rin ang scripture para ibalik ka rin dito. Hindi siya gagamit ang panibagong source para itama ka. So, while at family prayers one morning, the power of God began to rest upon me. And the thought rushed into my mind that it was mesmerism and I resisted it. Inisip niya yung mga visions na binigay sa kanya ng Panginoon is just mesmerism. Alam mo yung mesmerism? Yung fanaticism lang. Sabi niya, ay hindi ito galing sa Diyos, mesmerism ito. Alam mo kung ano nangyari? Nung ginawa niya yun, immediately I was struck down. Hindi siya makapagsalita. And for a few moments was lost to everything around me. And a card was held up before me, and on which were written in letters of gold the chapter and verses of 50 texts of the, of the Bible. Nakita sa kanya yung card, may 50 texts of the Bible. Amen. 
after I came out of vision, nung nawala na siya sa vision, I big on for a slave. Bigyan niyo ako ng, ng masusulatan. And wrote upon it that I was dumb. Sabi niya. And also what I have seen. And that I wish the large Bible. Pinakuha siya ng large Bible. Na, alam niyo kung gano'ng kabigat? 18 pounds. 9 kilos. Yung Bible. Gano'n ang Bible noon. Ganito ako. Kung gusto niyo makakita ng ganyang Bible, punta kayo sa L.A. Joy Estate. Sa Ayas. Papa. Ipapaano ko sa inyo kung gaano kabigat. Napakabigat. At he held it in her hand. She held it in her hand. And then wrote, also I had seen that I wished a large Bible. I took the Bible and really returned to all the texts that I had seen on card. Kinurn niya ng ganun, walang tinginan. Tapos pinoint up niya ng ganun. Habang merong nakataas dito ng sana, tinitignan niyo na yung, yung, pina, yung pinapakita niya at sinusulat. Text that I've seen on the card, I was unable to speak the whole day dahil sa kanyang daw. So sa tingin niyo saan galing ito? Sabi mo nyo? Inurn niya yung 50 texts. At pag binasa niyo yung 50 texts sa early writings, makikita niyo yung exact na gustong sabihin ng Diyos, hindi lang para kay Ellen White, kundi para sa bayan ng Diyos. Nang pagkasunod-sunod, parang binaybo sa si Ellen White ng Diyos. And yung encouragement na gusto ipakita ng Diyos para sa bawat isa sa atin. So do you think this comes from another spirit? So this was the Bible. Ito yung Bible natin ngayon na malaki. Ito maliit dito sa baba. At yung Bible natin, kung gaano malaki. Ganito siya. Yeah. Kapag pumunta ka sa mga Catholic Church, yung mga nakakadena pa ng mga Bible na lalaki, di ba? Ganun yung mga 18th century na mga Bible. 19th century yun. So, let's take for example, the chapter 5 of Pat, Prophets and Kings. 12 pages of the text and 22 direct quotations from the Bible. Usually an average of 5 to 12 pages, which account for roughly 5 of the 12 pages. Usually every page na mapapasa mo sa writings ni Mrs. White, may hina na ang limang quotation from the scripture. Pag binasa mo writings ni Mrs. White, may hina na ang limang quotation from the scripture. Okay, so Ellen White exalts the, the Bible. Now, may part 2 ko tayo. May part 2 ko tayo. So, I'll cut this off and then diretso. But, tuloy-tuloy ko lang to. The, new, the, the written testimonies are not to give new life, but to impress vividly upon the heart the truths of the inspiration already revealed. Man's duty to God and to his fellow man has been distinctly specified in, the, in God's word. But yet, yet, but few of you are obedient to the light given. Huh? Kaya tayo binigay ang writing ang writing si Mrs. White kasi marami sa atin ayaw sundin ang salita ng Diyos. Kaya nga ngayon may buhay ang writing si Mrs. White para na para i-plainly ipakilala sa mga tao ang kanilang eksaktong pagkakamali in case baka hindi nila nakuha. Additional truth is not brought out but God has through the testimony simplified the great truths already given and in his words chosen may brought them before the people to awaken and impress the mind with them that all may be left without excuse. Anong ginawa niya? Mas sinimplify niya ang Biblia sa atin. E pag binasa niyo step to Christ, well, very simple. Hindi nung nakabasa ng step to Christ. I hope that you could read step to Christ. And let me suggest some of the books that you ought to read. Una muna, step to Christ. You can be a Seventh-day Adventist, but unless you read the steps of Christ, you may not fully understand what Christianity is all about. Maraming mga Adventists na hindi pa Christian. Pero if you read the steps of Christ, you will fully understand what salvation is all about and what Christianity is all about. Okay? So hopefully you can read this. Ano pa? Um, read Christ's object lesson? Christ's object lesson, and explain lahat ng mga parables. 
And for the first time, yung mga parables na shrouded with what? Mystery. Na halos hindi maintindihan. She plainly what? Tells us its whole explanation. And my favorite part is the Christ object lesson, especially on talents. And he says, and talents of Holy Spirit, talents of speech, influence, little things, time, associates, and all of these talents. At kung hindi lang ito, hindi ko maintindihan yung parable of the talents. Napakaliwanag, plainly ang binabanggit ni Ellen White. Even little things, binabanggit niya doon na kahit maliliit na mga bagay ay mahalaga. And he says, forgetfulness is sin. He says, forgetfulness is sin. If you forget little things, it would be possible for you to forget the greater things in life. Sabi ni Ellen White, nasabi niya sa Christ Object Lesson, God give you the talent, you form your character. It is you who forms the character. This is not God that forms our character. It is you who forms the character that gives you talent in order for you to build a good Christian character. So kung wala ito mga plain words from Ellen White, how would we prepare ourselves for the soon coming of the Lord? Ano ang napakalaki pala ng requirements ng Panginoon pero hindi natin maintindihan because we do not uh, give so much time to the scriptures. Okay, so the plain words was given not to add another life but to you know give more understanding about the life. The Lord has sent His people much instruction, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Little heed is given to the Bible, and the Lord has given a lesser light to lead men and women to the greater light. Now, lesser light, greater light. Saan natin ang Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Ano yun? The sun and the moon. Ano? Saan galing ang light ng moon? Sa so, saan? Meron ba siyang sariling light? Wala. Pero pagka madilim na, meron pa rin tayong liwanag. Ganun yun. Sa araw, maliwanag. Pero pag madilim na, kailangan ng moon. Do you get the point? So pagka gabi, na nasa kadiliman tayo, ang moon ang nagbibigay sa atin ng light. Pero saan galing yung light ng moon? Sa so, saan? Just the same. If we are shrouded with so much sin, and we read the spirit of prophecy, we are led to the light so that it could lead us to further light, which is the, the Word of God. Assign natin sa uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. Ano sabi? And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart, knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Ano daw ang tano? As a light that shines in the dark place. Ano ba yung light that shines in the dark place? The moon shines in the dark place. Amen? Until it led us to the dawn. Hanggang sa mailig na tayo nito sa buka liwayway. Did you get the point? So the lesser light leads us to the greater light. Pagka nabasa na natin ang writings of Miss White, at binasa natin ang Bible, ang liwaliwanag na. Have you done that? Binasa niyo yung writings niya, tapos nung... nung Nung balikan nyo ulit yung Bible, ang liwanag na. So sa yung Patrick's and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, Desire of Ages, Acts of the Apostles, Great Controversy, Christ of Jake Lesson, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing. So sa yun yung mga yan. At pag nabasa nyo na lahat yan, balikan nyo ang Biblia, tinan nyo, liwaliwanag na yun. Na dati parang napakatilig. Yun ang yung role ng writings ni Ellen White. And I have like few minutes to go. Ellen White in relation to the Bible. Now let us see. The Adventists believe that Ellen White is tested by the Bible. Para malaman natin kung totoo hindi ang writings of Ellen White, check natin siya by the scripture. Ellen White points to the Bible and uplifts the Bible. Ang, si Ellen White, ang kanyang role ay to uplift the Bible. Iangat ang Bible. Pero tingnan natin mga Catholics. 
the Bible is tested by tradition, by the Pope. So ang Bible ay tinitest ng kanilang tradisyon at ng Papa. Malaking kalayo, di ba? Ano pa? Tradition or the Pope at and change the Bible. May karapatan ng mga Papa at ang tradisyon na, na magdagdag at baguhin ang Biblia. Ito yung pagkakaiba ng Catholic Church at ng Seventh-day Adventist Church. So, we do not believe that anyone writings is equivalent to the Bible. But it has the same inspiration. Pareho lang ng inspiration. The same pa rin ang Diyos na nag-inspire kay Andrew White. The same pa rin yung Holy Spirit na nag-inspire. Pareho pa rin yung purpose. Pero, hindi si Ellen White na magdadagdag sa Bible, kundi ipapaliwanag, paliliwanagin, at imamagrify yung Bible para mas maging malinaw para sa atin. Amen? So I think that to end, and for the last, I will say, He who hears, you hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Pag tinanggihan natin yung writing si Miss White, sino ang tinatanggihan natin? Sino tinatanggihan natin? Si Miss White? Your church? Okay. O yun nag-inspire sa atin. Kaya pagka tinanggihan natin ang writing si Miss White, it is tantamount to rejecting God Himself. So I hope that we would not reject the writings of Ellen White. Ito pa, meron akong illustration sa inyo bakit tayo matapos. Sumulat si nanay na kanya mga pagmamahal. And for the last 13 years, hindi mo binuklat ang kanya mga sulat. How would your mother feel? 13 years every week sinusulat ko sa'yo. Hindi mo binuklat ng sulat niya. How would she feel? Ah. Now, let me ask you a question. Matagal na sumulat si Mrs. White. Matagal na sumulat ang Panginoon sa pagkita ng writing si Mrs. White. Now, for many, many years, ayaw siya buklatin. How would God feel about it? Ma Tanungin mo mga 7th Adventist, naniniwala ba sila ng propeta si Erin White? Sinubo siya ng Panginoon? Sasabihin nila, oo. Now, ang susunod na tanong. Pinabasa ba nila ang text ng Panginoon? O yung neglect? Well, in the day na si save time ng Panginoon, ang sabi lang ay lagi ng Panginoon, matagal na kita ang pinadala ng pabalita, pero ayaw ka. So hopefully, mula sa panahon ito, simulan natin kumplatin ang mga rising sector. Sinulat ito lahat para sa atin. Amen? God bless you. Do you have any question? One or two? Yes. 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 Tapos, parang ang dapat siya parang kaya kasi din yun yung paniniwala niya ang Bible, ang story ang story na yun is parang kaya kaya lang mas naniniwala siya dun sa uh, theory na atong parang ganun po well, okay, may very clear sa history the Bible is historical sinabi natin historical really, it really happened what about archaeology? Di ba sa kanyang house archaeology? It's science. Jesus was a historical man. Nasa na si Jesus ngayon? Babylon was historical. Egypt was historical. All that was written in the scriptures can be accounted in archaeology. Even the word David, even the word Goliath, even the word... Lahat ng mga words na meron sa Bible ngayon are revealed in ar archaeology. How does he deny archaeology? It is science. So, iba yung fairy tale sa historical. Ang fairy tale yung merong mermaid. Nasa ng mermaid? Nasaan? Anong evidence ng mermaid? That is fairy tale. 
Santa Claus. Nasa, nasa lang Santa Claus. Sino ang image ng Santa Claus? That is very bad. Pero yung meron pang exact evidence, historically may Jesus Christ na nabuhay somewhere in, in uh, 180 or 480. At somewhere meron talagang na-crucify somewhere in 3180. Well, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina. Kung may pananang palataya ang tao, makaka-seek siya ng understanding. Pero kung walang pananang palataya ang tao, no matter what evidence you gave the person, he would not believe because he's not giving a chance to believe. It's an assumption. To believe that God exists is an assumption. And from that assumption, you will build your arguments. Pero kung wala siyang assumption, wala siyang belief whatsoever of the scripture, wala siyang gagawin pwede maghanap ng mali. Eh kahit marami ng evidence na nakita, kahit isang mali lang ang makita niya, he would reject it. So I would say there is a need of faith before we present or before we fully understand the word of God. There must be an element of faith. Okay? Marino, Pastor, in the discussion, na yung salita, ang mga sulat ko na rin siya, is na nagkangili po siya bago liwanag, hindi ito po ay tumutulong. Pero, may mga pagkakataon po talaga, Pastor, hindi po natin may tatago. Sa kapanahon na natin ngayon, maraming mga tao na hindi po marunong tapos may mga kapukulang sa pagdating doon sa pagbasa sa English kasi usually ang writing sa Ligi White is English eh ang pagkaalam ko na nakasulat sa Tagalog is yung dakilang ano lang eh pag-asa so itong mga tao ito na gusto sana nilang pag-aralan yung uh, mga sulat ni Ligi White samantala sila po ay wala po talaga po kaya na na iintindihin yan sa pagkat English so ang nasa kanila naman po is yung salita natin Panginoon po ni Apaybo sa pagkat may pagkakarang ng mga nasa dialect na po natin. At may mga tao po na talagang nakapokus lamang sila sa Bible sapagkat uh, medyo napakarami na po yung writing sa Ninjing Web kung ito po ang bigyang pansin. Ang katarawan po, Pastor, ay mayroon po ba itong negatibong impact pagdating sa kalitasan? Itong mga tao na uh, hindi man lang sila nakapagbasa sa writing sa Ninjing Web dahil sa may silang katulangan nung sa pagunawa at yung sa mga tao na talagang uh, nakapokus po sa Bible. Mayroon po ba itong negative impact pagdating sa kalitasan? Well, bakit ibibigay ng Diyos ang, ang testimony kung wala itong purpose sa huling araw? Mas satan ang demonyo sa huling araw. Kaya gumagawa ang Diyos ng mga strategies para mas maging contemporary ang approach natin in the last days. While the principles are there in the scripture, the strategies are not there. Ang mga prinsipyo na sa Biblia, pero yung mga strategy ay wala ito. So for example, theater. The theater was by the way. Definitely walang theater. Pero nandun sa Biblia na whatsoever is true, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is pure, think about these things. Yun yung principle. Pero nung banggitin ni Mrs. White, pag nanood tayo ng mga ganito, mga theatricals and all of this, most probably malilidestray tayo. So, these are strategies in the last days. Ang point ko dito, sabi ni Mrs. White, those who read their Bible, who rejects to read the spirit of prophecy, will one day reject reading the Bible as well. Kasi kung tinanggihan mo na yung spirit ng ulan na binigay ng Diyos, may malaking possibility na tatanggihan mo na rin ito. Kasi ganun lang yung spirit ang gagamitin mo sa spirit of practice at yung spirit ang gagamitin mo sa spirit of practice. May point, Pastor Estrella. Uh, wala pa po talaga tayo dun sa huling araw eh. May mga tao po talaga na mamatay na dahil sa uh, hindi pa gusto po nila talagang malaman yung guides sa CNG White. Pero namatay na sila na wala silang kakayanan na pag-aralan yun sapagkat mayroon po talagang mga elementary level lang. Ayan. So, ako point ko po, Pastor Is, mayroon po ba itong negative impact pagdating sa kaligtasan? Uh, hindi kaligtasan kasi pero kung saan, kaya kung saan, 
pagkatagumpay, how do we overcome it? Mas modern, mas magandang strategy pag nabas natin ngayon in, life, in in a way to overcome the devil. Kasi it's not more about ano, kaligtasan, eh. hindi naman tungkol sa kaligtasan, pero we are saved by grace, you know? saved by faith alone. Pero yung strategy to overcome the devil, strategy to overcome the devil and not be overcome by the devil, it's another thing. At hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na hindi pa tayo nasa last days. Kung hindi tayo nasa last days, nagbabagsakan ng mga yakis ko. Kung hindi tayo nasa last days, bakit hindi na makatagal sila sa mga Saturday problems? Nasa last days na tayo. Ibig sabihin, bakit hindi, bakit ang hina-hina ng mga young people, bakit hindi na sila makatayo? Eh, Biblia naman sila, nagbabasa sila araw-araw, nagkatayos, nag-o-ogre. And yet, they won. Tinan mo, almost 90% ng mga young people nag-aasawa ng nanatid. So, matanong na po kaliwanag sa Bible, na spirit of promise, na hindi dapat. So, huwag natin sabihin na wala tayo sa last days, kasi kung, kung wala tayo sa last days, bakit lahat na yun nagbabagsakan? Wala na natitin na. Oo, oh, maganda tayo sa evangelist, magaling, pero tingnan mo na sa backsliding. Mas magaling pa rin tayo sa backsliding. Because we need a strategy to overcome, amen? Sabi sa Bible, sa Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 and, and 10 and 11, they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and not loving their life so much as to swim from death. We need more strategy to overcome the death. Okay, we need to read the spirit of prophecy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay?